You are listening to The Flip Side with Noah Filipiak, connecting the reality of the gospel to the grit of life. You can support the podcast at patreon.com slash noahfilipiak or at noahfilipiak.com slash give. What is up, Flip Upon Am I? Or, as my friend Seth wants to be called, the flipped off. Yeah, Seth, I don't, I don't think we can... I don't think that that that's going to pass the the FCC guidelines that Flipside uh, abides by, but I will I will make a subgroup, a subgroup within the Flip Upon Am I, uh, for you, Seth, of the of the flipped off. And if anyone else uh, wants to join wants to join that subgroup, uh, you're welcome. Seth is uh, Seth welcomes you in. Uh, but I'm I'm not sure. I'll give you a shout out every once in a while, so so you feel loved. I want you to feel loved, and uh, the love of Christ, uh, you know, from me to you. So I'll I'll be sure to give you a shout out every once in a while. Uh, so welcome to episode 44 of the Flipside Podcast. Super thankful that you are here. And today's going to be a, a little different episode than the last few. If you've been tuning in to episodes uh, 41, 42, 43, if, if you haven't, I would encourage you to go go check those out. Interviews I did that all, all followed a theme, a theme of sexuality. Uh, episode 41, Wesley Hill is a celibate gay Christian. Episode 42, Preston Sprinkle just wrote a new book called Embodied about transgender identities and gender dysphoria. And episode 43 with Lori Krieg on her mixed orientation marriage and what that uh, taught her about and her husband, Matt, that they co-wrote together, I should say, uh, what, what it taught them about love and the gospel and those all three of those episodes. I, I think it's really cool that they were able to happen back to back to back i think it it gives it it gives uh it 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 talks about a subject that needs to be talked about more first of all uh, in the church and in our lives but it also it also really it talks a lot about sexual brokenness and you know this podcast uh, you know we talk about all kinds of different subjects on the flip side and and i like to keep it that way i know i know there's a lot of podcasts out there that just focus on one subject and 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 for and frankly, I maybe I'd get more consistent uh, listens if I did that. But I like to jump around just kind of as a pastor, you know, the things God's put on my heart and the things that are stirring in me and and in our culture. And but you know, if you're you're familiar with my book Beyond the Battle, and it's a book that addresses sexual brokenness. It's a it's a book that that topic of sexual brokenness when it comes to you know primarily heterosexual lust, uh, pornography, discontent in marriage and in singleness. And so that's a subject that I used to talk about exclusively uh, on this podcast. Before it was the flip side, it was a podcast called Beyond the Battle, the name of the book. And there's 12 episodes where that's all we talked about. And certainly I know some of you listening, that's how you heard about the flip side. That's that's how you started listening was because of reading Beyond the Battle. And so I just was reflecting and I thought it would be it would be good today to go back to doing a type of episode that I used to do a lot. And that's just where I talk about a subject. Uh, I've done a lot of interviews over the last few episodes, uh, but that, that is certainly not the only format that the flip side is in or, or can be in. And so today, uh, here in a, in a moment, we're going to shift gears and I'm going to talk about uh, not just sexual brokenness, but but just brokenness. And I'm going to share just some things from my own life and kind of check in with you and see how you're doing. And I, I wanted an episode that points us all back to to Jesus, that points us back to really that I'm hoping this episode itself will be a time as you listen, that you reconnect with Jesus and his love for you and who you are in him, your identity in him. And so so uh, we're going to get there in a, in a few minutes, but I want to give you a little a little heads up on that. Uh, before we do, I just want to say thank you for listening. Thank you for hanging out uh, with me on the flip side. I want to say a thank you to our podcast sponsor, Angry Brew. 
You can check out Angry Brew Coffee at angrybrew.com or fivelakes.com. You can use the promo code FLIP, F-L-I-P, to get 10% off of your purchase. Angry Brew is highly caffeinated coffee. You can also pick up a bag of Chris's Blend, uh, which is a medium roast and a dollar of Chris's Blend. A dollar of every purchase goes to Forgotten Children's Ministry in Honduras. Uh, what I want to do now is is start. Uh, well, and, and I guess I should say too uh, before I always forget to say this, but uh, you're welcome to email the show as well. So if you if you want to email the show, you can do that at podcast at beyondthebattle.net. Podcast at beyondthebattle.net. Uh, let me know if you want to join uh, Seth in the uh, the flipped off uh, segment of the flip upon a my. Uh, or honestly, you can email me about uh, silly things or very serious things. I, I've made an invitation in the last three episodes when we talked about uh, transgender identities and talked about homosexuality, same-sex attraction, just saying, man, if you're walking this road and you feel alone and uh, you just need somebody to talk to, shoot me an email, podcast at beyondthebattle.net. And a few people have, and I'm very thankful, uh, thankful to you and the interaction that that we've been able to have. So let's flip over to this topic of brokenness. And, you know, we've talked a lot in the last few episodes about how we we look to relationships. We look to romantic relationships, sexual relationships to to give us something. And it's often it's 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 not it's not every day that people look below the surface at what it is they're really after. So, so it might feel like you're just after a physical fix of some kind or even an emotional fix of some kind. But getting below the surface, for me, the way I describe it in my journey with, with what was beneath, what is and was beneath my, my desire for pornography, my desire for lust, my desire to be with you know other women outside of my marriage. And just what was what was what what was it i was really desiring beneath those more surface level desires maybe maybe as a way of saying it and what i really came to in my in my my prayer time and talking to god and talking to mentors and and counselors was a a, a thirst a desire for approval a thirst and a desire for acceptance a thirst and a desire for validation. So when I picture validation, I I picture some kind of, you know, assembly line where there's somebody at the end of the line and they have a rubber stamp and they they write validated on on a product that's a good product. You know, they write approved on it. Boom, approved. And if it if it doesn't me- measure up to standard, uh they write, you know, they they put a rejection sticker on it and they or or they 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 shove it off the line so that it it doesn't go. It doesn't go out into uh, into the retail world, and that's that's really how I feel when it comes to my temptations. Uh, and you know, if, if if you haven't read Beyond the Battle, I mean, I'm I'm talking about things like today in my marriage. 16 years into my marriage, I haven't looked at pornography in in 12 years uh, or something like that. A very long time. But but looking to my wife to to give me this sense of validation that that no that no woman can that only Jesus can and so it, it's so often we're we're discontent with our spouse and maybe there's bad circumstances and maybe there's good circumstances but it it feels like there's something else out there like i haven't experienced that that stamp of approval in a way that really lasts, in a way that really satisfies. It feels like there's something else out there that will give that to me. And often that's the drive for pornography where where the woman or the man in the picture, he or she is giving you in, in your fantasy, is giving you that sense of value. They're saying, I want you. You know, I, I just want to be wanted. And they're saying, I want you. In your, in your fantasy, you're able to, to experience that for a moment and it's it's not real and it's fake and it will go away and 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 oftentimes we know that full well but we still are driven to just taste it for for just a moment and this drives us this drives us if you're if you're single and you're longing for that marital partner uh if you're same-sex attracted as we've talked about 
often in the last few episodes and and you're a Christian and you you're following the Bible and you're going, OK, I, I don't control this orientation. I don't control this attraction. Uh, what, what do I do now? I, I'm 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 committing myself to a life of celibacy or uh, I, I'm committing myself to a, a life of singleness. And, and so and so I, I don't the, the fantasy is that if you could have a person, the fantasy is if you could have that that person that you dream about, whether you're single or married, if you could have that person, the fantasy is that you'd be satisfied, that 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 longing, that thirst, that hunger inside of you for validation, approval for being wanted, uh, that it would go away. And we can all testify that it, it doesn't go away. And married people can testify to single people that it doesn't go away. And, and you can get different stats on divorce and things like that. But, uh, you know, the rough average of divorces, if you include all marriages, you know, first marriages, second marriages, third marriages, it's roughly half. It's roughly half of marriages end in divorce. And so that's not a good track record, right? If we're all looking to marriage and or we're all looking to this, uh, you know, some people are never going to get married, but this sexual partner that's going to give me this validation that I'm longing for. Well, it's not a good batting average. And certainly of the 50 percent that stay married, uh, I don't know, but it, I would I would guess to say a large percentage of those would admit to still having the same hunger and longing that I'm talking about. And so uh, before I jump sort of to the solution, which obviously I've already hinted at, it certainly is Jesus. And, and I, and I want to talk, I want to talk about one of the most common questions I get uh, when I speak or do little workshops or, or uh, you know, sometimes it's groups of guys talking about sex and purity and marriage and singleness and all that stuff. One of the most common questions I get is, so how, like how Noah, how do you, I want to experience this Jesus love the way you're talking about it, right? I, I want to not want these things and not have this longing. I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to, to some uh, ways that I answer that question. But before I do that, I want to widen things out. I want to broaden things out beyond sexual brokenness and just talk about brokenness. I want to talk about insecurity. I'm going to share just some stuff I'm going through right now. And so maybe you're going through some things like this. I, and, and I want to overlay it all with this. I've, I've often had this, this assumption that I, I can arrive at a point of spiritual maturity where I graduate from these things. And so, so let me kind of say this in two ways, because, you know, I don't think you should write a book on, uh, you know, sexual purity like I did if you're looking at porn every day, right? Like that doesn't, you, you, you know, you, you should, you, you should have a, a path of freedom that you've experienced, right? But at the same time, and, and, and this is one of the things I write about in the updated edition of Beyond the Battle coming out this July. And, and so in the, in the two years, roughly between the first edition and the, uh, the second edition, or, or at least when the second edition, whatever. Yeah, you get the idea. In the two, two and a half years uh, between between those, one of the things that really struck me was this feeling like I had graduated. This feeling, I, I began to be looked at and seen uh, as the expert, the sexual purity expert and the answer man. And that's a dangerous place to be, first of all. I do want to talk about that some in this episode where our Christian culture Wow, do we do that? We and, and our whole subculture is really built on that. Both, both in the 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 pastorate. So so the role of pastor. Pastors are special people. Pastors are people that don't struggle. Pastors are people that have got it all figured out, and they're helping you get it all figured out too. And and I'm saying that uh, with with sarcasm. Uh, and I'll and I'll come back to my point there. But the same with sort of the circuit, the author circuit, uh, the the Christian. It's you know I I. I I, I say the word Christian celebrity kind of to be a little bit facetious with it. I think I know what that word means. I think I think it just means sarcastic. <laughs> I should I should uh, Google words before I use them. Uh, so but Christian celebrity, uh, you know, you don't have to be a celebrity. You can just be an author, a published author, a podcaster. But we, we get this idea that okay, this person wrote this book. And so, so they don't struggle anymore. They've got the solutions. 
And there is something about the circuit too, the pastorate itself and the circuit you're speaking and you're making pretty good money sometimes on speaking gigs. And this, this, frankly, that's not a world I've yet experienced. Uh, but speaking at these big conferences and kind of some are getting big book, book contracts and, and people really wanting to be associated with you. So let me, let me get a selfie with you. Let me get, you know, you know, and book signing is maybe a little different because it's a, I don't know, book signings, book signing, but maybe the same thing, you know, sign my book. And um, just that does things to your brain. That does things to your psyche. It strokes your ego in a certain way. And in a pastorate, it's, it's, it's some of the same things. It's different. It's just the attention you get. It's a sermon you give and people saying, oh, great sermon. And just, just kind of that admiration and looking up to you. And so, so what it does when you're when you're in that when you're in those shoes as that person the spe- the pastor or the speaker or the author you you kind of start to believe the a, a sports phrase uh, is you you believe I, and I'm going to butcher it but a team started to believe the headlines about themselves they started to believe the newspaper clippings about themselves and then what happens they get they get whomped on they get beaten they get they get upset. Uh, by a team that wasn't as good as them, that beat them because they started to believe what all the 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 fans and the press were saying about them. Oh, best team ever, best this, best that, and they let their guard down, and they stopped they stopped doing the things that got them to that place in the first place, right? So they they got there through through practice and discipline and and hard work and grit, and then they were told, so they thought. Oh yeah, we're we're good now. We've we've graduated from those things. We're the best, and we don't need to do those things anymore. And so then, another team who is doing those things uh, beats them, you know, in, in a game and or in a playoffs, uh, playoffs or championship or whatever it may be. Forgive me to non sports fans out there. <laughs> I, like to, I try to not do that too often to you. So every once in a while, though, uh, it goes there. But for me. It wasn't like I was looking at porn again. Thank God, uh, honestly, by God's grace. But what had happened is I was just becoming less vulnerable. And my groups of vulnerable community weren't what they used to be. So so uh, I used to be in and around a lot of vulnerable community where I was vulnerable and people were vulnerable. And in my, it was like my... It was like my my thoughts, my brain, the the corners of my brain that are that are dark and shadow. Th- naturally, they always had light being shined in on them because I was always exposing them. I was always talking and and in these vulnerable places and strong. And and then in my role with with the book coming out, the the indie book uh, in 2018. Uh, you know, I want to help people and give answers. And it can be hard when you're giving answers where you, you want people to experience the freedom you've experienced. And it's it's sadly, it becomes like a product where if 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 you want people to buy your product, you can't tell them what's wrong with your product. You have to tell them you you oversell it and, and you make it you make it sound honestly, you know, better, better than it really is. And I think I and I think I know I'm confessing I'm being vulnerable here. I was I was doing that where not that I don't I wasn't overselling Jesus and I wasn't overselling this path of freedom. But I felt like if I shared those dark corners of my mind in my vulnerable communities that I was in and and in uh, other other environments where I was helping men with their own sexual brokenness, I, I subconsciously, it was not a conscious decision. My autopilot uh, thought that if I was sharing areas I was struggling in as well, that it would it would jeopardize my authority in this area. It would it would make it would make my message seem less maybe uh, not authentic is the wrong word, but it like like it would just seem like oh well that well if you're still struggling then why am I even in this? Why am I even still? still reading reading this book. And so uh, God, by his grace, woke me up. It was it was a year ago. I think I've shared this before and I and I and I write about this in the new book, how uh, the book contract was coming around and there is real spiritual attack. 
And I was just had temptations I hadn't faced in a long time. And there was discontent in me and my marriage. And I was I was lusting over things that really weren't a problem for me in earlier, you know, stronger times uh, in my life. And it made me realize that I always will need vulnerable community in my life where I can be transparent and, and I can freely have have light shined, shown uh, onto those dark corners uh, of my mind and so that they don't fester, so that they don't grow legs and grow into a monster and something you know bigger. And that's important for all of us. So, so that's important for, for every single person and every single listener. And I've done some very practical, tangible things uh, to ensure that I will always have that in my life. One of them, and, and this, I'm just thinking of this now, if, if, if you're looking for something like this too, uh, one new thing that I'm going to be adding in the next month or two with our beyondthebattle.net groups is all the alumni guys of those groups are going to be able to join me on a Zoom call. It's going to be weekly. It's going to be Saturday morning. And it's just going to be a time to continue the rhythms of the book, the truths of the book, but also a time of, of transparency and accountability and, and reminding each other that we're loved, reminding each other that we are God's beloved sons and that, uh, that when the father looks at us, he's, he's well, he is well pleased with us. And so I'm cheating ahead again to some of the solutions, which is fine. I don't mind giving some teasers about those because it's beautiful and we can't hear that enough. Uh, but that's one of the main things we have to do is have people in our lives who we can shine the light, on, or I should say that we can open up the, you know, the dark corners of our mind too. And then they can shine the light of truth to us and remind us of who we really are. So, so we're chasing after in our brokenness uh, back to if it's a sexual relationship or romantic relationship or something we're discontent in. Uh, we're chasing after this identity. We want to be told that we're beloved. We want to be told that we're wanted. And we need to be reminded in transparent, vulnerable community looked at in the eyes, in the face, and hugged and, and held and, and told that we are loved. We are loved by the Father. We are loved through what Jesus did for us on the cross. And, and so we're going to get to more of that in a bit. But again, in typical flip side fashion, I'm all over the place. Back to the I wanting to widen this out beyond sexual brokenness. This, this desire, this, this desire for validation it is, it is by no means restricted to romantic and sexual longings. What I'm going through right now, and this is just me being transparent with you and shining the light onto some of these things. And, you know, uh, I don't know, sometimes it's just helpful. I think we experience more grace if, if we know there's others struggling with the same stuff as us, if you as a listener are as well. And we can often think, well, all those other people must have it all together. That Noah guy, he must really have it all together. And I <laughs> I don't at all. Uh, I'm really struggling right now. As So uh, right now it's, uh, it's February and the new Beyond the Battle book will come out in July. And it's a big deal, you know, for me as a, a new author, an author who's going from independent publishing to being published by Zondervan, that's a big jump. Uh, I don't have a huge platform. So platform would be, let's say you pastored a, a, a mega church of, you know, 5,000 people. Well, you have a platform of people that are going to buy your book. Or uh, I have a, a podcast, you know, I have the number of five podcasts in the nation. Uh, I don't. This podcast is ranked number five of all podcasts named the flip side. <laughs> iTunes. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but no, I mean, I, I don't, there's some people that have a, a, a platform because they have a huge blog following or a huge podcast following. Uh, I, let me tell you, I don't have any of those things. And so there's, there's anxiety that I have about this book coming out in July. There's anxiety that people won't buy it, that not enough people will buy it, that that I'm going to go and check its ranking and the ranking will be very low. 
And there will be back to that assembly line analogy of the person with the 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 rubber stamp. Uh, Zondervan will be there holding the rubber stamp, and instead of going approved, good boy, Noah, uh, I will be getting the the rejection X and kicked onto the floor uh, as an author. That's that's what this what that, that's where my anxiety is. And so within that, and in the author world, which I used to talk about much more. Uh, when I back when I did the behind the curtain podcast, my very first podcast iteration, which is on this archive on this thread, if you if you want to go way back in the way back machine uh, there, I don't even listen to those because I'm too embarrassed. Not anyways, it's fine. It's, they're, they're great. That's why I leave them on there. But anyway, that was a long time ago. But I used to talk about that a lot. And that was back when I had an agent and I was trying to get published. And I was I was it was really messing with me. It was messing with my soul. And it's doing that again. And so, so, so here's what I mean. Uh, the, the, what it feels like is I need more Twitter followers and more interaction on Twitter, like more comments, more retweets. Uh, I need more Facebook likes and follow, you know, and follows and, and comments. And I need more Instagram likes and I need more podcast stats and I need more blogging stats because if I don't have those things, I feel like a poser. I feel like a like a fake. Like, what does he really know? Or I feel like back to the book. Well, I don't have those things. And so so the book isn't isn't going to sell. And and what what really is at the what really is at the heart of that, what's really at the core of that is I'm looking to those things to give me my value, right? And it, Jesus, the value I have in Jesus. So, and, and let me break that down for, for a minute here. I get kind of getting to the solution that what we have to understand, Colossians 1, uh, 22, it's, it's a verse I mentioned uh, on here quite a bit. It's a verse that I put on my, my Patreon swag. Uh, and Colossians 1, 22, it, it tells us that, when the father looks at us, so almighty God, holy God, father of the Trinity looks at us, what he sees, he doesn't see someone when he sees Noah Flipiak, he does not see, oh, I wish that guy would get his act together. Ah, oh, you only have X amount of podcast downloads. Are you kidding me? That's not very much. I'm not very impressed with that. Oh, you know, your, your book sales, not impressive because Man, this other John Eldridge, wild at heart. I mean, I'm really pleased with him. He's he's my favorite son. But you, I mean, you're kind of embarrassing. I'm joke. I'm joking. But that <laughs> got so so. My point is, that's what it feels like, right? If what when I'm when I'm yearning for those things, it it feels like that's what God sees when he looks at me. Back to Colossians 1.22. That's not what he sees when he looks at me. What he sees, Colossians 1.22 says, because of Jesus, because of Jesus' completed work on the cross, Jesus, it is finished, that he made me holy, without blemish, and free from accusation. Basically, perfection, holiness, without blemish, free from accusation. Not because of me, not because my book sold as many as Wild at Heart. But by, by the way, that's not a goal of mine. Okay, that's a that book is a fantastic book too. I uh, I recommend it. Uh, but but it's not something that I did where the father looked at me and said, "At a boy, Noah." Now you're holy. Now you're without blemish. Now you're free from accusation because you did these things. Now I give you my affirming love because you did these things. Romans 8, 15 to 17. It says I'm a co-heir with Christ. A co-heir means I get what Jesus gets from the Father. And Matthew 3, 16 to 17 says one of the things Jesus gets from the Father is this voice from heaven and and in Matthew 3 and 16 and 17, Jesus gets baptized and the Father says to him, this voice from heaven says, this is my son whom I love, in him I am well pleased. I get to have that because I'm a co-heir with him. So what he gets from the Father, I get from the Father. 
And I'm holy without blemish and free from accusation because of what Jesus did for me. And so the, the trick is, and, and really the path is, and, and it's not a vaccine. I used to think it was a vaccine. So you got it now, Noah. You heard it on this podcast. You listened to it. And now take the vaccine and you're cured from ever thirsting in this way again. And that's not the case. It's not the case for me. And I don't think it will be the case for you. And that's why I thought I had graduated as well and, and had let my guard down. The, the truth is, I have to be reminded of that daily, regularly. That's the path. That's my path, and it's your path. It's a truth reminder that I am the Father's beloved son. You are the Father's beloved daughter or son. That's who you are through Christ. That's your identity. Your identity is in Christ. You're a new creation. The old is gone, and that new creation is perfect. As far as your standing before God, your status before God, when he looks at you, that's why you're saved, right? Connect the dots. That's why you can enter into heaven, because you're holy, because Jesus made you holy. He made you without blemish. He made you free from accusation. So your path and my path and doing this in community, we need to remind ourselves of that. I'm reminding you of that right now through this podcast. And in my vulnerable community groups that I'm in, I'm reminded of that regularly. And I have people that their job in my life is to remind me of that regularly. And when I start aching for more approval and affirmation from Twitter or from book sales or from Instagram or from podcast downloads, when I start aching for those things, it tells me it's a red light going off. It's, it's an alarm system and it says, yo, yo, you're, you're miscalibrated right now. You're, you're feeding off the wrong thing. Come back to Jesus. Come back to Jesus. Al allow the Father to speak his love over you again. Get in community. Talk with your mentors. Talk with your vulnerable community. Be transparent with them and allow them to remind you of truth. It's truth I already know, but my brain isn't computing it when I'm just kind of pounding it into my own brain. I just finished a book called The Other Side of Church by Jim Wilder and Michael Hendricks. And super good book. I highly recommend it. Uh, the first half especially was just really transformative, brand new stuff I had never heard of before. And he talks about this very thing that you, the right side of your brain lights up. The joy sensors in your brain, they, they light up when, when someone looks at you and, and, and reminds you that you are loved and that they love you and, and that our God, the Father, our Father loves you, loves me. I need to experience that in the vulnerable communities that, I am in, and you need to experience that in the vulnerable communities uh, that you're in. And so, so right now, that's that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at in February, with a with a book coming out in July. I have those anxieties, and and I just wanted to share them on the podcast. I wanted to share them uh, because we're on this journey together. We we need to be reminded of these things together, and it's been a while on the podcast since I since I took an episode just to talk about this. I, I would recommend if you want more on this uh, episode number twenty six was an episode that I. It's actually funny because I I took uh, an episode that I did. I'm sorry, it's episode twenty five twenty five. Uh, episode 25, how the love we have from the Father through Jesus is the antidote to our longings for acceptance, validation, and wholeness. Episode 25 on this podcast feed. And uh, that's a good one. I need to listen to that one again. And I just wanted to come back to this because, because you need to listen to this again. We don't graduate from this. And so it's not a vaccine. What I came to understand is that it is a meal. It is a relational meal. Jesus is the food. And I, when he says in John 6, at the end of John 6, 
He says, and I could do a whole episode on this. I love the end of John 6, but I won't. I'm just going to give you this one point. Uh, he says, all those people had left him. Oh boy, here I go. I'm trying. I'm oh, I'm getting sucked into the sermon. All those people had left him because he wouldn't do another miracle for them. Twenty thousand people leave him. Oh, here I go. I'm getting. I'm getting sucked in. I'm starting to go. Twenty thousand people leave him, and he could have easily kept them. He could have easily done another magic trick, which is what he did. It was a miracle, but he took the five loaves, the two fish, and he multiplied it, right? He could have shot donut holes out of his fingertips. He could have done anything he wanted. Those people would have stayed, and they would have, they would have given him these things, adoration, approval, validation. And, and let me say this, too. I'm all over the place. That is a hamster wheel. It never ends. You can never get enough downloads on your podcast or enough Twitter followers or enough interaction on Instagram where you feel like, Oh, now I have enough, enough book sales. There's always another book. There's always another book proposal. There's always another, another game out there where you have to prove yourself again. And if you don't win again, you lose. And now you're a loser. Like it's, it's, that's, how, it's, that's why it's slavery. That's what idolatry does. Idolatry never satisfies just like a porn addict, just like a relationship addict or a sex addict. These the, the approval addiction is it is the same. It doesn't it doesn't satisfy no matter how much of it you get. And so Jesus, he doesn't try to keep the 20,000. He lets them leave. He knows the gospel. He knows who he is. He knows he's the father's beloved son. Whom the father's well pleased with. And, and the father told him that. And, and it, it's at the beginning of his ministry. So what he does is he looks at his disciples and he says, are you going to leave, too? And I love Peter's response. Oh, this verse, it's one of my favorites. Uh, he says, Jesus, where would we go? You have the words of eternal life. <laughs> Mic drop, right? Boom. I that okay. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get on a tangent there. I'm gonna keep focus, focus, no, focus. So uh he starts. Before the people leave, okay, now I'm all over the place. Before they leave, one of the reasons they left is because instead of him doing a miracle, instead of him feeding them again, which is what they wanted, they wanted another magic trick, he says, no. Instead, how about you? I'm not going to give you more bread. I'm, how about you eat my body for your bread and you drink my blood for your beverage? And that's creepy, right? It's crazy. He's obviously speaking metaphorically here. And yes, there's some Lord's Supper cool stuff we can, we can pull out of that for sure. But I also really think what he's saying is the path of following Jesus, the path of following me, he's saying, is to feed off of me. It's not to feed off of approval. It's not to feed off of acceptance. It's not to feed off of validation that you can get from sex. You can get from a guy, you can get from a girl, you can get from somebody outside of your, of your marriage, or it's, it's not something you can get from more book sales. It's not something you can get from more, and let alone more Twitter followers. I'm talking about just when you post something on social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, on, on Twitter, and when people comment on it, when they say they like it, when it be, what's popular, you get, you get a little hit from that. You get a little dopamine rush or there's something that's kind of warm and fuzzy inside. And we get hooked on that. We get we get addicted to that. And Jesus is saying, don't feed off of that. Feed off of my body. Feed off of me. Feed off of Jesus. And that's what I've learned is that it's not a vaccine. This is a daily experience with Jesus. It's a daily reminder from the Father. There's a mystical sense of God's very spirit being with us. It's the Holy Spirit. Romans tells us it's Jesus's spirit. And, and we can listen and, and we can take truths of scripture and we can allow the spirit to speak those scriptures to us in those times of prayer. And listening, listening prayer is, is meditation. You're meditating on those truths, like the Psalms say. You're meditating on these truths. You're allowing the Spirit to speak them to you. 
you're hearing them for yourself from God to you. I love you. You are my son. You are my daughter. You're my child. And I'm well pleased with you. I'm well pleased with you. I don't, it doesn't, however many books you sell or don't sell or, or what you accomplish in your career or don't accomplish, that doesn't change. That's not a factor in my love for you. You're holy without blemish, free from accusation because of what Jesus did on the cross. It is finished. He did the work. You don't have to do the work. And it's a daily meal. It's a daily meal. So I, I've hit on a lot of, of, of that answer of how to experience this. I've hit on a lot of that already. But a few, a few other ways just practically, uh, you know, you, in your prayer time, I just talked about that. Listening, listening to these truths from the Father. There's something called a breath prayer. So breath, like you take a breath in, you take a breath out. <sighs> breath prayer where you can take this truth and turn it into a breath prayer throughout your day and word it in a way that connects with you. You breathe in, you breathe out. I am God's beloved son, whom he loves and whom he is well pleased. And you pray part of it on your inhale, you pray part of it on your exhale, it is a short reminder prayer of truth. You can pray it as God's voice speaking to you. I love you. You're my beloved son or daughter, and I'm well pleased with you. You can pray it as a prayer, not as a question. You're not asking God, do you love me? You're affirming the truth reminding yourself that he loves you. I am God's beloved son whom he loves. He is so pleased with because of Jesus, because of what Jesus did. So that's huge, doing that throughout your day, making this just a daily part of your rhythm with Jesus and having having people in real life remind you of this regularly as, as, as a practice, but also when you're struggling so that when you have this ache inside of you for the next big thing, for more, whatever it is, I, I named many things, but when that ache is there for you and you're, you're about to jump, you're about, well, let me say that it doesn't have to be, look, I'm, I, I, you never want to say never, but I'm I'm never going to cheat on my wife. But that that doesn't mean I, I that I'm OK with having the ache inside of, of that, that discontent or when fantasy, uh, the autopilot of fantasy starts up in, in, in my mind. I don't want that there. That's that's not freedom. I hate that. That's not something I want. And, and the in those. So it's not that I'm going to make the jump to go cheat on my wife. So I don't want you to think that you have to be at that point before someone has to remind you of these things. Share the ache. Share, man, this urge is there. This longing is there. I got, I got some brothers and sisters that I walk with and who are listening who are same-sex attracted. Some identify as gay, some uh, celibate gay Christians. Some identify as same-sex attracted. But that urge and ache is there, right? It's real. You're carrying this cross, and some days are better than others. And when that ache is there, you need someone who can look at you or, or through a phone or and the, the best we can do, maybe on Zoom or on video and say, brother, sister, you are loved. You are God's beloved son. You are God's beloved daughter. He delights in you. He is so well pleased with you. His face shines upon you. And I love you too. I love you as your brother in Christ. I love you. Affirming the love that the Father has for you. We need people that can speak that to us and can sober us up and can pull us back into reality and say, and here's the point of all of it. 
I don't need to go looking for it somewhere else when I already have it. I don't need to go looking for food when my stomach is already full. I'm already wanted. I'm already loved. I'm already delighted in. I don't need to go looking for that elsewhere. I'm not saying you don't need community. You do need community. I'm not saying to do this in isolation. I'm not saying just to do this in your personal time with Jesus. You need community. But the food that fills us up is the love of Jesus that he has for us. The love of the Father, really, specifically, the way Colossians 1.22 breaks it down, the, the Father looks at us and says, you're my beloved child. Jesus made that possible. It's because of Jesus. He made you holy. I love that. It's not on me. And nor is this, is this just spiritual, like self-help talk. This is not a good TED talk. This is not, this is Jesus made this happen. It's, it's not, it's not just self-esteem and self-worth. This is gospel truth, literally gospel truth. Jesus made this happen. So I, I hope, I hope this helps you today. I hope it, it reminds you of this truth today. Maybe this is one to come back to and listen to again, to just be reminded of these truths from scripture. Let the Holy Spirit speak them to you. And I, and I challenge you to go a step further. Uh, do you have vulnerable community in your life? Do you have people that you, you can share this message with and, and say, will you speak these reminders to me? And I'll be here for you to speak them to you and, and get some people together where that's your rhythm. That's your practice. Uh, it's beautiful. We need it. So, so I hope that helps. And, and by all means, uh, yeah, just pray for me as your brother in Christ. I need prayer. Uh, pray for me. Uh, for these next February through July and beyond. Um, I think those aches and urges are going to be there. And just pray for me that, you know, every, I don't need to repeat everything I just said on the episode. Uh, just just pray for me that I, I'll walk in my sonship. I'll walk in the love of the Father to fill me up and accept me. And also uh, my counselor, you know, he encouraged me to, um, encouraged me to write out my why. So I was sharing some of this with him and I'll, I'll wrap up with this here. I was, I was sharing this with him and just, you know, man, it feels like I should be, I feel like I should be beyond this. Like, like this is stuff. I mean, I wrote a book about this stuff. Honestly, you know, it's like, why am I struggling with this again? Or I, I learned all this when I tried to get published the first time. And here I am, you know, feeling insecure, wanting more, wanting more downloads, wanting more likes. And he said, take, take some time and write out your why, write out your why. And I'm gonna, so I'm gonna read it to you. It's something I'm gonna, I'm gonna have um, framed, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in my, in front of me on my desk where I can see it. Um, and uh, pray, pray for me that this is what I would walk in. This is the reality I would walk in. To me, this is the Jesus reality, and all that other stuff. You know, whatever it is, approval, fame, bestsellers, all that. That's all. That's that's all. That's that's not where the fruit is. That's that's worldly stuff. That's not the true vine. This is the Jesus stuff here. This is what I wrote. I blog, podcast, pastor, preach, and write books to scatter seeds of the gospel to help people find the freedom and love that Jesus offers, where it's not about the quantity of the seeds. It's about each seed mattering. It's about God's pursuit. It's about the depth of root and subsequent fruit. It's about how one seed produces more seeds. It's about faithfulness. It's about God being in control. It's about Jesus getting the glory. So you can just keep me in prayer and that that would be what I walk in and, and that my stomach would be full of the Father's love for me that I have through Jesus so that I wouldn't need to go looking for it elsewhere. Uh, and I, I need to be reminded of these truths and, and, and we all do. So, so thank you. Thanks for listening today. Thanks for walking through this uh, with me. And actually, I know, I know hard, hard 
to fathom because I've been on a great streak of Noah's rants. I've been on a great streak, but I'm not going to do a Noah's rant today. Some of you are very excited that you don't have to endure a Noah's rant. Uh, some of you are very sad and and that's okay. You can go to listen to an old episode. You can find an old one. I'm sure. I'm sure it would be great. To be honest with you, I, I told my wife I would do the dishes before she got home. <laughs> She's going to be home really soon. And then God told me to go do a podcast. So, you know, I, <laughs> so I need to get done. I need to be done so I can go do the dishes. But honestly, thank you for listening. Uh, a couple things as I wrap up uh, beyond the battle.net. We have a couple openings uh, for a group coming up uh, Monday night group. That's starting very soon. You can jump in. And if that group fills up or is over, you can always, you can always, uh, join our waiting list. And that's been really effective. We have guys just join the waiting list and then I'm able to craft the group around your schedule, which is, which is pretty awesome. Uh, if you do like this podcast, uh, I'd encourage you to share it, share it on social media, uh, tell your friends about it, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. And you can also leave, uh, reviews on iTunes and that helps a lot. Uh, so if you go head over to iTunes and leave a review, that is fantastic. So this will wrap up episode 44, another, another one in the books. Thank you so much for listening. Head over to angrybrew.com. Use promo code FLIP to pick up some awesome coffee and support your favorite, actually your third favorite podcast, The Flip Side. I will see you next time on The Flip Side. The Flip Side with Noah Filipiak is a South Francis Press production. Copyright Noah Filipiak, www.noahfilipiak.com. Theme music by Kyle Lake at K Lake Music, used with permission. Please subscribe and leave a review on iTunes or wherever podcasts are found. In the reverence, stressing for leverage That they see the king stretch on the pavement leading to heaven Y'all, y'all, dripping in that gall that don't perish People selling fake, see the green around their belly Aching refuge in his hand, see his poems, my living quarters Close them when I'm finished, it's time to bring me closer There's no purgatory, cause you're in or you're out When you see him in the clouds, then you know it's going down Raise them, raise them, raise them. They've been sleeping for some ages. Now all God's babies so confused by this hatred. Poor pit preachers shouldn't aim to be A-list. Money probably long, but short is with your days. Have you ever heard the sound of freedom? Freedom, 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 freedom? Have you ever heard the sound of freedom? Freedom, some confusion then i hope you see him clearly raise them raise them raise them they've been sleeping for some ages now all god's babies so confused by this hatred poor pit preachers shouldn't aim to be a list money probably long but short